see this? Up, down, left, and right. Okay, so this video is going to help you figure out the wiring on these crane remotes. And sometimes the directions for these are not very great, so this should give you some extra direction with that. It's not only going to apply to attachments, like I'm powering this stump grinder in this case, but you might have your own use case for this, and the wiring is going to be very similar for that as well. And here's some diagrams that I've put together for you, so feel free to pause the video and save these images for your reference later on. Okay, so here's a quick explanation of what's going on with the wiring on paper. So you start with your battery, you have a basic positive and negative power coming off of there, right? So then you have your wireless remote receiver, and that has nine wires coming out of it that are all labeled. And just keep in mind that one through three are your input for your power to power your wireless remote. And then four through nine are your output. So that's where you're rerouting your power. So positive to one, negative to two, and that's powering your remote receiver. And then positive to three, which is your common, which then when you press a button on your remote, it determines where to send that power. So you have incoming power to three, and then if you press, uh, let's say, the up button, it routes the power from three to six. So four and five, I have just capped off. I don't run to anywhere because four is just always on when the remote is operational. Five is the green button on the remote, which is an extra function that I don't need. Six, seven, eight, and nine, that's your up, down, east, and west. Okay. So, now we have to take this power that comes out of here and somehow power our attachment with it. So we have four functions on the attachment. We have up, down, left, and right. Left and right is also the east and west. But I don't want to run all of this high amperage power to power this attachment straight through this remote. So instead of hooking these positive wires directly to this attachment, I'm going to run it through a solenoid. So then we're activating these solenoids with the up, down, east, and west, and then that is going to power our attachment. So the attachment is getting power straight from the battery, high amperage lines through the large terminals on the solenoids. When you're activating the solenoids, these wires coming out of the wireless receiver, those go to the small terminals on the solenoid to activate the solenoid. So you need a positive and then a negative to complete that circuit. So the negative, you can also take that from the battery and go straight to each point on these small ends on the solenoid. And then we have that high amperage power running from the battery through here to the large terminal and then the large terminal to the attachment. And then of course the attachment is also grounded as well with that number five wire. So I'm gonna show you how to wire this all up today. Uh, you're going to have to use solenoids. So the way that this stump grinder is actually getting power is through this 14 pin connector right here that comes off of the attachment. So what this ammo box is really gonna be is just a protective structure for those solenoids something to keep the dust and the grime out, keep the moisture out for the most part, and then just contain the bulk of the wiring. Check it out. All four of those solenoids right on the top there, and they're just welded in. Um, just little tack welds holding it in. You don't need a lot. That's holding, closes just fine. Latches down tight. We just gotta get a hole drilled in here now to get all the wires coming into this and we can install it on the machine. So once again, that ammo box is just a hub for all of the wiring and something to protect the wiring as well as the solenoids that everything is running through. 
All right, starting off very simple here with the wiring. So we got alligator clamps. We got positive and negative. The positive, I'm actually running on the green and the white wire. And the black, I'm just running to the black. So what that gives me is two power outputs that I can use later. So I'm gonna have positive power to the green and the white, but then the black here is my ground. Okay, so we've got three main parts to the wiring. That middle cord there is power from the battery. That's gonna be powering the wireless receiver for the remote. And then we've got the output here. So after that determines where the power will route to through those wires, it will output to the stump grinder. So the stump grinder attaches into that 14 pin connector right there. So then we've pretty much just got to wire all of these ends into this box here. So I don't have a drill bit that is large enough for the hole that I need for all of those wires to run in here. So I'm just going to plasma cut a hole real quick. So this is actually looking really great. It's uh, tight enough and not a lot of void space around there. Got all three wires going in, which is gonna allow us then to hook all of this up. All right, so it's time to talk about this wireless crane remote receiver. So you'll see here that it has numbers one through nine on it, and those are indicating the wires that come out of it. So there's nine wires, and each of these wires has numbering on it so that you can tell which wire is which. Now, one and two are power for this receiver, okay? So one is positive, and it has a half amp fuse wired in line with it, and that's something that you have to do on your own. It does not come with the fuse in line when you buy this. Uh, number two here is negative. So that's your ground uh, negative for the receiver. Okay, so three is the common. That gets routed to either four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Okay, so you have power coming in always to the three, but then depending on where you're at on your remote, if I were to press the up button, that would then activate six. So then I would get power out of my wire over here that says six on it, okay? But you don't have ground coming out of this. So your attachment, it has to be grounded separately from this. You're not running ground through here necessarily. All you're running through this uh, series of switches is just the positive. Now, four and five are really not too important for the application that I'm using. And that's why I actually have four and five capped off. I'm not gonna attach those to anything because four is anytime you turn on the remote and you just have the remote on, um, which is just the safety switch comes up and the green button, right? And then the status light in the middle, you can see it turns green. Anytime that status light is green, which technically it is now because it's operational, uh, the main will be powered, so there will be power running through the main. So that could be useful for certain applications, but not this one. Okay. Number five, it says RO on there. So RO is referring to this green button. If I come up here and I click the green button, that's going to complete the circuit for RO. So that's just an extra function. You know, they say this is a four function remote, but really it's five because you have the start button here as well that completes the circuit of five if you wanted to. But I'm not going to use four or five. I'm just using six, seven, eight, and nine for up, down, east, and west, okay? Okay, so how I had just said that we need positive power for one and three, and they both have fuses on it, I have this little jumper here that I created. So one of them has a half amp fuse and the other is a 10 amp fuse, and I marked it so I know which one goes where. 
So we can take positive power right here off of uh, these wires and we can wire this into my power cable here. Quick tug test, that works. So we've got positive power to here and here and those are literally going to connect to my one and three there once again. So we've got our two wire here, which is ground if you remember. And that two is going to hook on to our black wire coming from the battery. That's the ground. Um, and then I've got these jumpers wired in for spreading out the ground throughout the solenoids here. There. Um, so now we have negative running to the two, positive running to the one and the three. And remember those positives have a fuse in line with those to prevent the burning out of that receiver. So that receiver's powered at this point. Now, we've got to figure out how to distribute the power to these solenoids. So we're not actually taking the power that comes out of these and sending it straight to the stump grinder because I don't want all that, all that amperage running through here and running through the receiver that may burn it out. So that's the reason that we're using these solenoids, okay? So all this is gonna do is activate these solenoids which then takes the higher amperage uh, through the solenoid to act six through nine that need to be wired in. Remember that four and five are kind of a discard in this uh, since we don't want constant power running through it when the remote is on, which is what four is. And then five is, once again, when you press that green button, which is a function that I'm not going to use. You place these guys on the small end of the terminal because all we're doing with these is activating activating the solenoid through this remote okay and then we have to also provide the other end of the solenoid with ground so that you can uh, cause that solenoid to change internally which completes the circuit from here to here so we've got power all along here and then I've actually got ground wired in here. So remember that black wire? We've got ground running into the receiver to power that, but we've also got these four grounds coming off of here just to activate these solenoids. So that's all just powering the solenoid. So if I was to actually power this up right now and press the buttons on this, you should hear those solenoids activating. If you don't hear those solenoids activating, you've got a problem. Now you want to actually send the power to the attachment that you're grinding. So you take your 14-pin uh, connector, right? This wire, the wire that's running through here, and so these are the larger gauge wires that run the functions on the attachment. And you want to ensure that you hook them up to the large terminals on the solenoids for high amperage. So this is power running straight up to the machine. Okay. So positive here, and I've got this jumper that I made here. So I'm gonna take the positive here and split it four ways. So the wires coming off of this jumper are positive energy from the battery, and we need to make sure that they get hooked on the opposite side of the wires where we hooked the functions of the attachment onto. So they are going on the opposite end of the large terminal on those solenoids. On the sides here, so we'll slide those on like that. Positive power there, and then the stump grinder side, boom, we go on the other side there. One, two, three, four, and I'll wire those in. So what I'm doing right here is adding in this green power cable. Don't worry about this too much. Uh, this is actually just going to be used for a rocker switch that I can control from the machine itself when I'm standing on the platform. So this is in addition to the remote. 
This is going to run on the same system, uh, but it's not crucial to run the remote itself. It's going to be functional. I know it. We're going to hook it up and uh, it's going to work just fine. So once again, we've got power coming in, going to the wireless receiver, which then runs to the small screws on the solenoids, which activates the solenoids. One side is the positive that comes out of there, which is the switch that is being turned on when you press the button. And the other side is the negative to complete the circuit, which activates that solenoid. And then when the solenoid is activated, we take positive power from the battery. So one side, we've got positive power on the battery. And then the other side is four wires running to the stump grinder for different functions. And when the solenoid is activated, it completes the circuit. So we get positive power, high amperage from the battery to the proper circuit on the stump grinder. So the stump grinder is always grounded. Uh, which then completes the circuit when you send one of these wires as positive energy to it. I have a sweeper attachment here which only has a left to right function. It does not have an up and down. That's why I'll have that toggle switch to move this thing left to right when I'm running it. But pretty much for the most part, anytime I'm running the stump grinder, I'm gonna have that wireless remote. So now we've gotta figure out a spot to put this box inside of that machine and then find a good mounting spot for our seven pin connector. We'll run that green cable, which is actually just a, an end of a power cord that I cut off. Um, which I'll wire in a switch to this end right here. The wireless receiver will stay inside here somewhere and all that will be visible will be the switch box that comes off of the green wire and then this here which uh, will power that stump grinder attachment. Power from the battery. You can see a little light on inside of that receiver, meaning we have power to that. And then I've got the 14 pin connector from the attachment connected to all those solenoids there to then steer the stump grinder left, right, up and down. So I'm gonna start this thing up and test it out. green wire 
Well, this is the end of it. This is going to be a switch, but in the meantime, I can just test it by jumping a wire across it. That's moving left. All right. Okay, so I was actually able to slide the box right down in this slot uh, between this water pump and hydraulic pump area and the side. So all I had to do to access that was literally just pull this hose off. This hose just comes off of the hydraulic reservoir right there. Uh, and then I just pulled that off at this point. It just leaked a little bit of fluid, not a big deal. Slid that down in there and hook the hose back up. Okay, so I think I'm finally actually done. I've routed all my wires how I want them to look. It's pretty clean, I must say myself. So once again, we've got the box down there. Uh, one thing that worked out just perfectly was this remote receiver. Uh, so this wire just kind of runs up here and this actually ended up being a press fit. I was able to slide it right up in there and that's snug. I mean, I didn't have to mount that down with any hardware. It's, it's tight in there. Um, and it, the antenna that comes up just misses this hinge, uh, piston as that door closes. So that's about perfect there. All my other wires are routed up through around to this side and uh, the power comes up and comes out right here and i currently just have it clipped on the side here but all i have to do is just unhook those and then clip them to the battery for that and that powers it and then when i want to run it i just take this boom that's the 14 pin connector all the rest of that wire is coiled up down in there so i can pull this out and run it through the hood and slap it on the side of the machine when I want to run it. So if you've made it this far, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. It takes a lot of work to not only do the project, but then film it, edit it, and compile it in a format that is consumable. So uh, more equipment videos to come, and more cool stuff to come in general. So uh, stay tuned. Peace.